<laughs> a hero alone. Mission, find the one and restore it to its rightful place. Mere guards can't stop Fearless George. <laughs> He's tracked the one of ones to here, the lair of the Dark Betsy. Buford Fromage, famous for smartness. Yay! Ooh. Help! Ah! I am free! <laughs> and sore. <laughs> Even though Fromage is free, you will never get the one of ones back. <laughs> She's right. You'll never find it. Because you'll never get past my big brass bubbly butt! Time out! Time out, Steve! Whoosh! Clank! You mean Professor Fromage! No, I mean Steve. Time out! Why are you sticking a robot on us? I'm supposed to be the bad guy this time. <laughs> yeah, you're bad, but I'm secretly worse. It's a twist. Exciting. Unexpected. Well, adventures are supposed to be full of surprises. Whoosh, clank, clank, ha. Betsy, Steve, time to go. Ah. You want us to stop playing right at the exciting part? Well, that means tomorrow you'll start playing right at the exciting part. Hey, that's right! George didn't want to mess everything up by cleaning, but he knew that you couldn't leave toys on the floor. Someone could get hurt. Before we go, help George clean up. It took so long to set all this up, we never got to find out how our high-stakes adventure ended. to do something for more than three minutes. Let's play catch. What are you doing, George? Wow, why didn't I think of that? Face it, you're no monkey. <laughs> the storm's over. He'd found it. The missing one. <laughs> That's the world's crankiest polar bear. Guardian of the one. Can Fearless George ever get out of this? Ah. Yes. <laughs> With the aid of his loyal pterodactyl, Hansel. Well, that was certainly an unexpected twist. He returned the missing one to where it belonged. Again. This time, George is a wizard trapped on the South Pole by penguins. And if we run out of time, we just roll it under the bed. Ah. Whether he was being a wizard or cleaning up toys, Fearless George was up to any challenge. <laughs> On their way home from the circus, the monkey with the yellow balloon and the man with the yellow hat noticed that Professor Wiseman's light was still on. Don't tell me you're still working, Professor. Of course, it's only nine o'clock. 
What's this? A foot race? Mm-hmm. We're trying to raise money for an expedition to the lost city of Omam. Oh. Great cause. I'll sign up for that. Hey, you want to help me train, George? <laughs> Great. What about you, Professor? Are you going to run? Me? Oh, I can't run. I've got way too much work. Poor Professor Wiseman. She doesn't know what she's missing. <laughs> the next day, George couldn't wait to start training. <laughs> hey! W wait up! <laughs> This was strange. The professor who said she couldn't run was running. <sighs> oh, terrible, absolute disaster. What, did the T-Rex collapse? <sighs> oh, worse. Anonymous donors. They won't contribute to the expedition unless I run the race. Oh, but that's great. Races are a lot of fun. Can you help me train? I don't know a thing about running. No problem. Let's meet in the park at lunchtime tomorrow. Oh, I can't wait. No, Charky, look out! Oh, oh, oh. oh boy. What? He's sprained his ankle. How can I train for the race without him? You want to be my personal trainer? <laughs> okay. Well, let's get running. <sighs> oh, is this a Ferris wheel? <laughs> okay. I've never been on one of these before. <laughs> What an amazing view! Hey, look! There's the museum! Ooh. I can see my window! It looks so small from here! <laughs> the professor had so much fun on the Ferris wheel that George took her to all his favorite places. <laughs> The day the professor outran him, George knew she was ready for the race. The race was on. The professor seemed to be doing everything right. She ran at a steady pace. And there she was drinking water. So far, so good. I thought it'd be fun if my personal trainer finished the race with me. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> and I found out who those anonymous donors were. Apparently, they thought I needed to work a little less and have fun a little more. That's right, because all work and no play is a crummy way to spend your day. <laughs> to thank you for helping me learn that lesson, I want you to have my medal. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for helping me with the Nature Week exhibit, George. <laughs> We'd like to see the tracks of all the animals that live around here. <laughs> oh, the swim mask? 
Oh, I'm gonna go jump in the lake to conduct the Nature Week fish survey. Bye. Ah. George wished his photos were more exciting, but there weren't many exciting animals around here. Hey, George. Ah. What you doing? Wow. I see you've got almost every local animal except that fawn I've seen in the hills. Huh? A fawn is a baby deer. Bet you don't see too many of them in the city, huh? A fawn was just the special, unusual animal George was looking for. Come on, I'll show you where to find it. George still hadn't seen the fawn or learned what its tracks looked like. These were the biggest tracks George had seen so far. Something extra large must have left them. They looked like big duck tracks. <laughs> a big duck would make a terrific photo. Ooh, yeah! <laughs> this was like the long track the garter snake made. giant duck with a snake's tail would make an even better picture. <laughs> but a huge snake with duck feet would be the most incredible photo of all. <laughs> Maybe it swam back home. George remembered he'd seen big tracks like these. <laughs> in a book. There they were. Dinosaur tracks. A duck-billed dinosaur. <gasps> and the tracks were headed towards Bill's house. <laughs> Hiya, George. Did you see the fawn? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess those do look like dinosaur tracks. <laughs> yep, my new boots were hurting my feet, so I put these on to walk to the lake. I told you I was going swimming, remember? Uh-huh. Hey, now I know what it's like to walk in a dinosaur's footsteps. <laughs> <laughs> With no hungry dinosaurs around, George still needed that special photo for Nature Week. Huh? It sounded like Jumpy was hungry again. But George had enough pictures of that squirrel. <laughs> For such big animals, those deer left pretty small tracks. Hey, deer tracks. Wow, you used fruits and vegetables to lure the deer to our house so you could take photos? <laughs> Look at these wonderful deer. Oh. How did you manage to capture such amazing photos, George? Oh, you know George, he just used his imagination. Isn't that right? <laughs> Most mornings, George went out on the porch to find the paper. Ooh. This morning, the paper found George. George wished he could be a paper boy someday. But he didn't even know how to ride a bike. Not yet, anyway. 
<laughs> this? Oh, why, this was my bike when I was a boy. I sure had fun. But it was a long time ago. George liked knowing the man with the yellow hat was holding him up. By the third day, <laughs> oh. he rode so fast, the man with the yellow oh. hat couldn't keep up. <laughs> Very good, George. I think you're ready to ride on the road. <laughs> now remember, always watch where you're going, stay on the right side of the road, and signal turns, like this for left, and this for right. <laughs> That's it. Oh, and be a good little monkey cyclist. Bye-bye. <laughs> so fast, but I'm going to be late for school. Hey, could you finish my paper out? <laughs> <laughs> Trusted with a paper route, it was like George's wish had just been granted. Every house on the road gets a paper, including the houses across the stream. Uh -huh. Yes, George had become just like a real paper boy. Nothing would stop him from completing his route. Last time they came to the stream, the man with the yellow hat made paper boats. George thought he remembered how. His boat was so good, George decided to make a whole fleet. Be a paper boy. <laughs> That's an important job. <laughs> Looks like you've delivered them all but one. Another day's hard work almost done, eh? <gasps> George couldn't wait for his newspapers to be sun dried. George had promised Bill he'd deliver all these papers. If it didn't get done, Bill could lose his job. Uh Maybe the man with the yellow hat knew where to get dry papers. Hey, hold on, George. How about we just buy a few dry papers and deliver them right now? Yeah. And so, George was able to finish his route just like a real paper boy. Maybe I should buy a new bike for myself, too. <laughs> Sorry. Look, Hundley, it's your buddy George. <laughs> Come on in, guys. Thanks for letting Hundley spend the night while I'm gone. I brought all of his chew toys and snacks and grooming supplies. Thank you, Hunley. And this is a list of everything Hunley needs and when he needs it. Ah. 
Oh, that's quite a list. He's used to doing things in a certain way. Uh, uh. This is the first time we've been apart in three years, seven months, and 15 days. <laughs> I'll pick you up in the morning, just like we talked about. Bye-bye. Bye. We'll make sure he has a good time. I'm gonna do the laundry. Next, add one half cup of water. Hundley had been taught good manners, to be neat, and to chew his food thoroughly. Waiting for Hundley to chew wasn't George's idea of fun. Ooh. George couldn't wait to find out what was next on the list. Just to make sure Hundley wasn't trying to tell him something important, George checked the list. Hundley didn't want to play. He always slept with Squeaky Mouse. Squeaky Mouse helped Hundley sleep and kept nightmares away. Hundley knew George was having a bad dream, and he didn't have his own squeaky mouse. Wow. Hello, Hundley. How you doing, boy? Was he any trouble? Not at all, right, George? <laughs> Hundley says thank you. Dogs and monkeys don't always understand each other. But sometimes a squeaky mouse can tell you who your real friends are. Edible Arboretum, a cornucopia of exotic comestibles. Blueberries! Aracia! Blueberries are my favorite bush-based fruit. Come on, George. It, it looks like you all forgot the county sprout rules. Uh, rule number one, never eat any plant that you're not 100% certain is safe. And that means... Consulting the Edible Plants Guidebook? Um, 
no, it means getting an okay from an adult. Right. Rule number two, plants are living things. You can kill or hurt them if you're too rough. So don't pull on them and don't break any branches. <laughs> Come on. Why is the screen flickering? Either the Earth is off its axis, or I forgot to charge the batteries. Okay. George, can you climb that tree and see where we are? <laughs> and Bill... Bill? Bill, where are you going? Don't worry. I've got my handy backup compass. This way, folks! Bill? A, a sprout never leaves the trail. That, 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 that's rule number three. Bill! Oh, our excitement's really growing because we don't know where we're going. In this direction, green. In this direction, a path. <gasps> George couldn't believe what he was seeing. Someone was trying to break that branch. Somebody was not being a sprout. Oh no, this man was wrecking a tree. Whoa. Hey, are you a monkey? Cool. I always wanted a monkey, but my mother said no. George had to do something, and fast. This tree was in trouble. Hey, return the headgear, monkey. George didn't mean for the hat to get wet. Or the man. But George couldn't wait around. He had to check on that tree. George wished he could think of a way to get the branches back on the tree. He needed something sticky. Really sticky. Like... Mud. George! Oh, thank goodness I found you! I'm sorry I left you in that tree. <laughs> oh, Dr. Greenbean, nice to see you. <laughs> sorry we're late. We've had a rough day. Tell me about it. First this monkey ran off with my hat, and now my tree lopper has vanished. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> What's going on? Who put mud on this? Uh, George? <laughs> ah, so Dr. Greenbean was cutting some branches and you thought he was hurting the tree. Uh -huh. Oh, you should have asked. Oh, wait, <laughs> you're a monkey. Well, anyway, this is called pruning. You make a careful cut, and it doesn't hurt the tree at all. Hey, I got it! Uh, Mr. Sproutmaster, according to this, you're going the exact wrong... Wait, you're going the right way. Never mind, proceed. Are you closed? Is there some holiday I forgot about? Ask the chef. What happened? Oh. Please, please, just a taste. A tiny little taste? <laughs> please? Mm -hmm. oh. huh. <sighs> Gnocchi approves all of my recipes. But for the past few days, she likes nothing. I cannot serve unapproved food to my customers. 
Gnocchi lives on Italian food? Of course not. She merely gives approval. One lick, good. Two licks, excellent. Three licks, magnifico. <laughs> Oh, my cooking is worse than the cat food. <laughs> well, it sure doesn't smell worse. Yuck. Huh. Mmm. Mmm. And it certainly doesn't taste worse. Not that I've ever tasted cat food. You're just being nice. If Gnocchi won't eat my food, there's no point in serving, do they? Oh. Flower delivery. Oh, it's a nice selection today. Uh, just to put him down, Hector. Thank you. Okie dokie. No, no, no. No chewing under the flowers today. We just started using a florist. Gnocchi thinks the flowers are snacks for her. You might as well let her eat flowers. She won't eat my food. Oh. I will talk to Chef. This is what comes of letting a cat make cooking decisions. George wondered why Gnocchi wouldn't eat the chef's cooking when it was clearly delicious. Oh. Maybe tomorrow would be better. May as well not let them go to waste. If Gnocchi's eating cat food, she's not sick. What could it be? Uh, <coughs> ah. <coughs> what will we do without ravioli? <coughs> Uh-oh. I think I'm allergic to something in here. Yeah, I, I have an allergy. It's when your body overreacts to something like food or a, a, a plant or flowers. Some types of flowers can make some people sneeze and cough. But for the past few days, she likes nothing. No, no, no. No chewing under the flowers today. George, what are you doing in here? What are you... George, I think he's allergic. You shouldn't... <gasps> One lick, good. Two licks, excellent. Three licks, magnifico! Yes. 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 Job. <laughs> this will be our special tonight. It's Gnocchi approved! <laughs> if not for George, we would never have known that Gnocchi was allergic to those flowers. Giorgio, you have saved the restaurant and my reputation. I'll give you a free pizza. Hi. Boy, I'm glad to be home. Professor Wiseman asked me to bring some rare stamps to Mr. Stamp. Ooh. One, two, three, four, five. All there. Whew, they're so rare, I, I was nervous I might lose one. <laughs> wow, George, I can't believe you uh, did all that while I was gone. <laughs> you know, I think you broke the world's speed record for making a gigantic mess. George didn't see a gigantic mess. Just a bunch of little messes that looked big together. George, you have to learn to clean up after yourself, and there is no time like the present. Here's your very own dirt dragon.
Now you can clean up whenever you see a mess. <laughs> see you later, George. Hi, Mr. Stamp. Those rare postage stamps are right here on my... Can I call you back? <clears throat> huh. Wow. George cleaned the whole place, including the rare valuable stamps. Uh, that means they're in the vacuum until he empties the bag. <laughs> Charky couldn't carry all those small pieces of biscuit at once. Lucky for her, her friend George was here. Charky hoped he would guard the pieces for her. Charky forgot that George didn't speak dog. Did a monkey in a cape just take our jacks? <laughs> a monkey with a vacuum just vacuumed up my winning lottery ticket. <laughs> George was a happy hero, thinking of all the animals and people he had made happy. Isn't it working? What good is a superhero without a vacuum cleaner? When the bag is filled, you empty it into a garbage can and start again. <laughs> of course. It was time to empty the bag. <laughs> and there was the perfect place to get rid of everything that was in it. George saw everyone he had helped today running towards him. They must be coming to thank him. George, have you emptied this bag at all today? George was happy to be of service. I'm happy to say they're all there. Uh, thanks. George, would you like to vacuum my place? I have lots of valuable, dusty collectibles. Valuable collectibles? Uh, sorry, uh, gotta go now. Bye. <laughs> George! <laughs> 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 <laughs>